In 2008, a boy from Woodland Park, Colorado would go missing, only for his body to show up seven years later somehow stuck in the chimney of an abandoned cabin. Today we're going to be taking a deep look into the intriguing and heartbreaking mystery surrounding the death of Joshua Maddox. Surrounded by the beauty of Pike National Forest lay Woodland Park, a small city with only a population of 7,500. Among those 7,500 was a true free and carefree spirit in the form of 18-year-old Joshua Maddox. He was an incredibly well-liked person, both from his teachers for his good grades and from his peers for his kindness, humor, and amazing guitar playing. Unfortunately, this would all come to a halt on May 8, 2008. Joshua told his sister Kate he was going for a walk alone, which in and of itself wasn't unusual as Joshua loved to take nature walks and hikes by himself. The family became slightly worried when hour after hour passed and Joshua still hadn't returned home. But these long excursions into the forest weren't necessarily unusual for Joshua, so there was no reason to panic now. Not only that, but Joshua was 18 years old and legally an adult, and his parents were big proponents of letting him come and go as he pleased with the faith that he would be able to handle whatever situation he might find himself in. However, when the hours turned to days and there was still no sign of Josh, his father took the initiative to report him missing to the police on May 13th, just short of a full week after he had left. Joshua's father called around, reaching out to Josh's friends to see if anyone had information on his son, but no one had seen or heard from him since early May. Searches for Josh began, spanning the Parkland area for any sign of him, but sadly, as weeks and months passed with no new information, the case of Joshua Maddox slowly began to lose traction. Josh's happy disposition gave the police no reason to believe that he'd ever been involved in any criminal activity that could have led to his disappearance, so they listed him as a missing person and left the case open hoping that any remaining searches might turn up some information to bring his family closure. Kate Maddox, the last person known to have spoken to Josh before his disappearance, said she liked to think that he had run off to start a new life as a musician in another town, and that would one day show up back on their father's stoop with a wife and some children ready to meet their grandparents and aunts. The Maddox family eventually moved, but Mike, Josh's father, held on to the ownership of the house just in case Josh ever returned. Sadly, however, that would never happen. The years passed with no new news about Josh's situation. That is, until 2015, when a local builder named Chuck Murphy made a shocking discovery. Back in the 1950s, Chuck Murphy had bought a cabin on Meadow Park Lane in a large plot of land surrounded by forest. The cabin had an interesting story, having been used as a den of illegal gambling by its former owner. However, in the last decade, it had gone mostly unused and was in a state of abandonment and disrepair, leading to Chuck making the decision to demolish it, and thus changing his life and the lives of the Maddox family forever. While demolishing the cabin, construction workers found a decomposing skeleton wedged into the cabin's chimney. Through dental records, the police were able to identify the body as Joshua Maddox. While this gave closure to a missing persons case that, at this point, had been open for seven long years, it also raised a lot of questions. How had Joshua ended up at that cabin? Had he been murdered and placed there? Was the death merely an accident? Everyone only wanted to know one thing. What happened to Joshua Maddox? With the body having been found during the demolition of the cabin, much of the evidence that possibly could have been used to answer some questions had been destroyed or messed with. The body itself didn't answer many questions either, with little to no signs of trauma, according to Teller County Coroner Al Bourne, as well as no drug use. With that in mind, the cause of death would likely have been dehydration or possibly hypothermia, but they had no way of knowing for sure. With no hard answers anywhere, Joshua Maddox's death was ruled an accident on September 28, 2015, a month after the body had been found and seven years after he had originally gone missing. The most promising theory the police had was that somehow Joshua must have climbed onto the roof of the cabin and fallen into the chimney, getting himself stuck and slowly freezing or dehydrating himself to death. While this theory became mostly accepted, one individual had his own ideas. Chuck Murphy, the owner of the cabin, found this theory incredibly hard to believe as he knew there was a rebar cage covering the top of the chimney. If this was there, then there was little to no way that Joshua could have broken it apart to fall in in the first place. This wasn't the only issue with the police's theory. Joshua's body had been found mostly naked, wearing only a thermal shirt, with the rest of his clothes resting by the base of the fireplace. If he had fallen in, then how had he taken off his clothes while apparently stuck? And how had he managed to throw them outside of the fireplace? Not only this, but the last time Chuck and his family had been in the cabin, the fireplace had actually been blocked by a custom-built breakfast nook. This means someone would have had to pry it off and move the breakfast nook to even access the fireplace. So even if Joshua had somehow been able to remove them and throw them outside the fireplace, who unblocked the entrance to the chimney? With all this information, the coroner's cause of death was becoming harder and harder to believe. 
but if it really was murder, then who could possibly have committed the crime? The identity of the possible murderer had left everyone stumped. Joshua had told Kate that he was walking out alone that fateful day, nor did he have any enemies who might want to hurt him. It seemed like there was no clear way to turn. That was until a thread popped up on the website Reddit of all places. In 2016, an r slash reddit thread was started, asking people who knew real-life killers to share their stories. One anonymous user posted a story that seemed all too familiar to many people. User Genta Mangina wrote that their good friend Josh had begun to hang out with this teenager named Andy, and heard Josh say that the two of them were planning a trip down to New Mexico. After Josh had disappeared, the user forgot about Andy, that is, until someone showed them two articles chronicling Andy and the murder he was charged for. Andy had apparently made good on his plans with Josh and went down to New Mexico, only to be the perpetrator of a fatal stabbing, and even claimed to have stabbed another woman and shoved her in a barrel, not unlike Josh being shoved in the chimney. The Reddit user in question, of course, connected the dots about Andy and Josh and immediately went to the police to report their hunch. However, the police were not interested. At the time of them reporting this possible lead, no body had been found, and Joshua was a legal adult, meaning that the police didn't really care enough to look into them. Apparently, one of the cops told the user that Josh was actually alive and living in the next town over, which is obviously not true. With all of this stacking up, it's incredibly easy to believe that Andy might have met up with Josh at some point and led him to the cabin, where something inevitably went down that led to Andy murdering Josh and stowing his body away in the chimney. However, this theory comes with its own flaws. Up to this point, Andy seemed to have a penchant for stabbing people, but Joshua's body showed no signs of trauma. And there's also no real proof that Andy and Joshua were friends. While the story seems to have enough circumstantial details to make it seem real enough, everything we know about Joshua and Andy's relationship comes from an anonymous Reddit user who could have been making everything up for all we know. With no actual evidence, this theory remains just that, a theory. There is one other major flaw with the murder theory. Chuck Murphy mentioned that there was a rebar cage covering the top of the chimney, which would have prevented Joshua from falling in accidentally. However, Murphy repeatedly described this cage differently. At one point, the cage was described as rebar, which Joshua, who at the time would have been around 150 pounds, would have had no chance of breaking, but he later described it as a metal mesh, which seems like it could have been easily removed. Not only were there these inconsistencies, but the police actually stated that they never found any such chimney covering on the premises at all, though it is entirely possible it was hauled away for scrap by the construction workers before the police could get to it. Murphy also noted at one point that the fireplace had a heatilator insert, which others have since pointed out would have stopped someone from standing up in the fireplace or somehow cramming the body in there. All at first glance, many of these theories seem true, ranging from an accidental fall or an intentional murder, but when you dig deeper, nothing seems to make sense, and you end up with more questions than answers. It's currently unlikely that we'll ever get true confirmation on what happened to Joshua, with too much information simply left undocumented or obscured by the active construction that was happening at the crime scene. This unsolved case is one of the most mysterious we've ever come across, and is intriguing as it is heartbreakingly tragic. Joshua Maddox was a genuinely good human being, with a knack of art, music, writing, and with a truly free spirit. And the fact that anything this heinous could have happened to someone like him is awful. This is the end of the story for now. Comment below your thoughts about the situation or any other stories you'd like us to make a video about. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.